Mindset, spirituality, what should you read? Low vibration frequency. We're going to cover it all today on podcast number three. How's it going? My name is Charles Botenston. I talk about personal development. I'm going to be bringing back book reviews. Do not worry. If you like that kind of content, then definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's get right into it. The first thing that I have to bring up is it's going to be ugly before it is beautiful. Okay. When you're actually building anything, they're going to see the foundation and they're going to say, uh, how is that going to be a cathedral? How is that going to be a house? How is that going to be a mansion? When you first start going to the gym in a while, it's going to be ugly. You're not going to be going at the same pace as the person who's running seven minute miles. You're not going to be benching two plates on either side like you did in high school. It's kind of like that that high school person that peaked and then they get married and they kind of get the dad bond. They're eating potato chips and watching NFL on Sundays. And then they say, I need to get back into shape. And then they go to the gym for the first time this January and they say, Wow, I lifted a lot more when I was 18 and now I'm 45 and it's embarrassing that I could barely do a fourth of what I used to actually lift. That's the that's exactly where I am right now. In other words, you have to give yourself permission. Give yourself permission that you're never going to be what you used to be when you were doing it consistently. So when I was doing triathlon training consistently in 2018, eating correctly, going to the gym, sleeping well and not drinking, guess what? I was running incredibly well. I was running seven something like 715, seven minute miles, sometimes under seven minute miles for a long time, like 10 miles, 15 miles, 20 miles. Okay. I'm nowhere near that. Okay. I'm barely breaking nine minutes for one mile. And that's like a sprint to me. So it's going to be ugly. It's going to be very ugly. But this is also in any area of your life, whatever area of your life you're looking to improve, whether it's a relationship, whether you're already in a relationship and you want to make it better. Okay. I'll give you another example. So Eric, a guy that I make sales calls with, we just started getting back into making sales calls to, to expires. So expires are people, their home comes off the market. They weren't able to sell. It's very frustrating because the home comes off the market. And then all of these agents just start pounding them with emails and calls and texts and notes and Popeyes and all these things. And the owner's like, why, where were you when my home was on the market? And they're angry and they're yelling and they're not happy and they say stop and they say some other choice words. And that takes a certain level of ugliness to get through to be able to turn someone around into an appointment, which we just did today. So you have to understand that whatever you get into, another one is in a relationship, okay? I was talking with my buddy and I was asking him because he's got a great relationship with his wife. He's been married for about 15 years. He's got two kids. He's way outside of the city. And I was like, what's your secret, bro? You know, it looks like you have an on-fire relationship. And the reason that he has an on-fire relationship is the exact reason why what I'm talking about right now is he goes, it's not always pretty, dude. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, when the kid's waking you up and you haven't gotten sleep in three or four weeks, it's, it's not pretty, it's ugly. However, you're consistent. And that's the same thing with here is that you're, you're not going to the gym and just on fire. Michael Jordan was never always on fire. He talks about how many times he, he missed the game winning shot, how many times Babe Ruth struck out. I think he led the league or close to it. He, he also led the lead in, in home runs. So whatever endeavor you get into, make sure you understand that it's going to be ugly. You want to start putting out content, it's gonna be ugly. You wanna start filming video, it's gonna be ugly. You wanna start asking women out going on dates, it's gonna be ugly the first time. Say you just came out of a relationship, you gotta give yourself permission. Number two, what should I read? I get this all the time, what should I read? You should read whatever makes you read, okay? Re a book, not magazines and social media and all that. I mean, read something that makes you read. So that could be fiction, that could be nonfiction, that could be biographies, it could be history, it could be personal development, whatever the case is. I wrote this down, you read until you love to read. That's the best way, because I get asked all the time, Charles, what's a great book? What's a great audio? I'm going on this trip, what, sh what, what should I put in my Kindle? Whatever you want to read, you have to just read, because I don't know where you are in life. You know, you could be going through something, you just want to daze out and you go into a fiction. It could be a personal development fiction. It could be a romantic fiction. It doesn't really matter. It's that you have to read something until you actually start to love to read. This is very important because I think they say after college, people read on average less than one book a year. Let me say that again, less than one book a year. They'll pick it up, they'll buy it, they'll go to Barnes and Noble, they'll pick it up, they'll bring it on their trip, they'll get about four to five chapters in, say a quarter of the way through, and then that's it goes on the bookshelf, collects dust, and they never read it. So read until you love to read. And to piggyback off of this, you must prioritize education. 
and but not education the traditional sense from the school because that's all indoctrination but this is education from someone who understands business if you want to learn about business or finance or marketing or content or whatever you're getting into you have to prioritize whatever you're right now for me it's content that is specific to new york city i used to just put out content now i'm like i'm going to put out content specific to new york city so now i'm doing they just passed a bill in New York City that if you go below 60th Street, you get charged $15 in a car. That's crazy. So guess what I did? I put out content about that and guess what happened? It was it probably was one of my better reels that I've done in a while. And I go, well, actually, and this goes back to number one, actually, I've been pretty bad at putting out content. I've, I've been very ugly at putting out content. And then you put out something and you go, oh, I hear my calling. My calling is bringing a little personality to news that matters locally. That's actually pretty good. I'm going to remember that. Moving on. Mindset. This is something that I changed years ago, and I keep on hearing it online. I have to do something. That's all you hear. I have to do. I, I have to go to this party. I have to go to this, this event. I have to go on this date. I have to go to this meeting. I have. It's all about I have to. The thing is, when you say I have to, and I don't know if I brought this up la last week, but you can you can use the word I get to. I choose to because that means that you're in control. So moving on, this is going to be more about spirituality. So you hear all the time is, you know, you attract your tribe, whatever you are, you attract your tribe. So if you are negative, you're going to attract negative people. If you love drama, you're going to, you're going to attract drama. If you love to exercise, you're going to attract that. Whatever the case is, your tribe is who you are. It is exactly who you are. And by the way, on top of that, where you are right now in life is exactly where you should be. You are no further along and no further behind. You are exactly where you should be. Exactly. The friends you have, the money you have, the body you have, the mindset you have, you have a girlfriend, you don't have a girlfriend, you have a wife, you, have, you don't have a wife. It doesn't matter. You have, you have job prospects. You have money flowing in effortlessly from multiple different, say, cash flow re areas like real estate or an online business or whatever it is. You're exactly where you should be. Okay. That was a tough pill to swallow when I first heard that years ago. And this is the exact same thing is that you vibrate at a certain frequency and it sounds woo woo. Yeah, of course. However, why is it when I'm on sales, just happen appointments, just happen contracts are signed. Why is that? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm not at a different frequency. Okay. What's his name? He used to say this all the time. Bob Proctor used to say this all the time. Your frequency attracts exactly, exactly what your frequency should attract the people, the relationship, the job opportunities, everything. So you will come into, so this is what I wrote down is that your frequency also attracts the food, the amount of food, your exercise, your mindset, your sleep, everything. Should I pick up my phone? Should I not pick up my phone? Should I go into personal development? Should I not? Should I read a book? Should I not read a book? Your frequency is everything. So how do you elevate your frequency? It's, I actually just heard this on Dr. Berg, who's a great YouTube, you got to subscribe to his YouTube channel. Dr. Berg talked about it today. The four ways to not have the, or how to not attract or not get, attract is a bad word, but not, it's how to not get cancer. Okay. It's, it's four ways potentially, obviously you can't, you know, say definitely, but one of them was lethargy. In other words, laziness. So if you're lazy, you have a bigger chance to actually get cancer because you're not moving. Nothing in your body's moving. There's no oxygen moving throughout your body. Your heart isn't beating faster. It's not getting blood to its necessary organs, or it's not cleaning out the body. That was a shock to be in the top four. Of course, he said food, which would be fasting. He obviously said exercise, but he said lethargy. In other words, laziness is actually up there. So what, what would that include? So if you want to have a better vibrational life, it is putting joy above everything, not choosing the things of joy, but changing your attitude. There's a, there's a great book. I might, might not have it over here, but it is by Earl Nightingale and it has everything to do with attitude. It's very short. It's only about 125, 150 pages, but it is amazing. It is an amazing book. I highly, highly recommend it. I'm forgetting the name right now because I read it years ago, but pick up the book. It's by Earl Nightingale and it's about attitude. You can change your attitude and your attitude is everything. So if you're not getting what you want, when it's a relationship, whether it's a job, whether it's your body, whether it's your mindset, it doesn't matter. Your attitude is everything. And guess what? You control it. You control your 
attitude. If you think someone else controls your attitude, you need your attitude readjusted because they don't. The weather doesn't, the media doesn't, the government doesn't, your friends don't, your spouse don't. You control, you control your attitude. You're, you're, the same thing can happen to a hundred people. And guess what? There's a hundred different responses. The same accident can happen in your neighborhood and whoever witnesses it, it's different things that happen. They were going really fast. They weren't going really fast. I actually know that person. I can't believe whatever the case is, there's all these different stories. And guess what's even crazier? The older you get, as I hit the microphone out of the way, the older you get, that story changes even more rapidly. So all those stories that you tell about childhood that happened to you, or even how you got fired when you're 20 years old or 15 years old from your first job, or what you experienced in high school or middle school, it's all changed. Your mind is not accurate. Your mind is lying to you. Okay, the further back you go in time, the more your mind is lying to you. So you have to be very, very careful about the stories that you tell yourself because the stories you tell yourself is the meaning that you then put on your current life. The reason I can't is because of something that happened in the past. The reason I'm not able to make the most amount of money is because I didn't go to high school or I didn't finish high school, I didn't go to college, whatever the case is. And guess what that all wraps around what I was just talking about, which is your frequency. How you are vibrating, walking around, why, why are some people walk in a room and they say, oh, he just lights up the room. That, that's, a, that, that's actually a physical thing. If, you've, if you actually look into the electric universe theory, it's a thing, okay? And moving on to the last thing. This is something that I've been thinking about for a while because there was something called, I uh, some book I read called Biocentrism. This is years ago when I started getting into like, what is this physical universe? Is this a, a simulation? Is this a video game? Is this electric universe? Is this a wave function? Are we, are we in the mind of God? Are we walking around, but we're not really walking around? Like we're in a VR headset and nothing is moving around us. We're kind of just doing this and our body makes us move throughout. And this is what I came to a conclusion of, which, you know, it's very different than what I have now, but it made me really think about what we're projecting out into the real world starts in our mind. This is our tape running. The tape, the video of the movie is in our mind and it's just going and going and going and going and going. And it projects out to the reality, to this real world, whatever is in our mind. Thoughts are things. And I said this last week, I can, I cannot, I cannot stress this enough is that the projection through your eyes is exactly what you're thinking. You actually create the reality from your brain. Okay. In other words, if you look around and you say there's lack or it's a bad world or I'm scared or I can't make enough money or there's no one right for me or there's no job right for me or I'll never be in shape or I'll never be loved. You are projecting that through your eyeballs to the reality. This is the reality, but it all starts here. This is the projector room in the back of the movie theater that you can easily just change out the video, put in a new video, and now the projector is totally different. This has happened to me in the last month. You obviously know that I have become more in touch with my relationship with God. Since that time, he has plucked away. I, I was just reading it in John today. He has plucked away and, and, and took away thorns that were in my side that I've been thinking about for the last three and a half years. For the last three and a half years, I have struggled. Okay. It, it's, I will, I've talked about it many times. I will talk about it. However, when you pull a thorn away, okay, it hurts because it's a thorn. It's in your side. Once you pluck it out, you go, oh, wow. I feel a little bit lighter. I feel a little bit different. And that gets projected out to the real world. And then you walk throughout the real world differently. And what I was reading today, it was in John chapter 15. What they were talking about was that you can't bear new fruit unless you trim the bush, unless you actually go through and you snip away the leaves that are excess. What happens when you cut your hair? It grows back more. It grows back faster. So you can't bear fruit if you are not trimming away the bad things in your life. You can't, you, you, <laughs> there's no way that roses on a full big bloom bush are going to be able to blossom. You got to curate that down to the core area. And that means cutting and then it grows more. What does that mean in your life? 
That means cutting out the things that are not, I talked about it last week. You have to get deadly serious on this. This isn't a joke. This isn't like, oh, okay, it's a nice motivational video. This is deadly serious to your life, okay? Where are you, where are your thorns? Thorns. Where, where is your overgrown, just not producing any fruit? Is that in relationships? Is that in our relationship? Is that in the city you're living in? Is that in the food you're putting into your body? Is that the stuff you listen to while you're actually working out? Are you actually working out? Are you snoozing your alarm? Okay, we, we have to go introspective because as I said before is that, or actually what I'm saying right now is that you're projecting your reality onto the world, okay? And then there is a mirror that comes right back at you. You do not hear jealousy and lack and negativity and fear and despair and depression if you're none of that. But if you are that, it's a mirror. Reality is a mirror that reflects exactly who you are. You are projecting onto the mirror and the mirror projects right back at you, okay? I, I walk around joyful. There's someone that would say, why is he walking around joyful? Because that's what's running in my head. But that's running in my head literally in the last month because I had to remove all the weeds that were in my head. That means the alcohol. That means I had to start exercising. That means I had to get off of all the drama of social media. So I had to post to social media instead of consume social media. I had to put my phone down. I had to read the Bible. I had to read books. My podcasts that I was listening to were not about drama and all this nonsense or sports. It was, a, it was actually about real estate or content, making content. And when the, this is the last thing I'll say because I'm, I'm running late. When the projector overheats, listen to this, your mind is a projector. The screen is the world. We think everything is happening outside, but it is really being projected inside. And when it overheats, in other words, when the projector overheats, it needs to sleep just like us. Let me say that again. Your mind is the projector. The screen is the world. We think everything is happening outside of us when it's happening inside of us. Bob Proctor, rest in peace. The man who talked about this the most. Your thoughts are your reality. Your questions that you're asking is Tony Robbins 101. It is your reality. What 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 is the reality that you're putting out there? So I'll leave it there. Each week, I'm going to come in with about five to six different areas in which I am really focusing on. And right now, last week, it was energy. This week, it's mindset. Next week is probably going to be, well, you know, I might come out with a Friday as well. But if you found any value in this, share it with a friend, leave a comment. I do appreciate the other comments that came through. I might actually read them because a couple of people gave feedback, which I, I, I enjoy. But I also want to make sure that we're all leveling up here. Because when I say it's deadly serious, the amount of people that are going to be on medications or is going to go into a vice, and the vice is pornography, gambling, addiction to TV, gaming, alone, loneliness, whatever the case is, watching people who stream, it it's going to be an epidemic if the men do not get serious about how they control their mind, their reality, exercise, food, and sleep. That's it. Add in fasting. I fast every single day. I don't have breakfast, okay? I don't have dinner. I just have one meal. I need to detox and cleanse my body from the abuse that I put it through for the last three and a half years. Again, I'm gonna talk about that more at a later date. I don't feel comfortable right now, but it has not been good. I have to detox. My body needs to repair. My organs need to repair. My skin needs to repair. My mind and, and my speech and my energy need to repair. So to do that, I have to go to extremes. This is for me. I'm not saying it for you, but for me, it has to go to extremes. What is the best use of my time? So if you found value, subscribe to the channel. We're going to be coming out with podcasts every single week, at least two. One might include a little uh, God podcast, but either way, have a great day and I'll talk to you next week.